Hello, and thank you so much for joining. We're here to have a conversation today about harnessing digital technologies for employee satisfaction. And we want to focus on this concept of experience management and how to create an effective digital workplace. So my name is Josh Finke. I'm the Chief Solutions Officer for CompuCom. And today we're going to explore some of the concepts that are really changing the way that we view employee satisfaction, their productivity, and how workforces and organizations are responding to the last few years of change as everyone has shifted from the pandemic workflow of uh, starting to move into a work from home to now a hybrid model and everything in between. So as we start to consider the impact that employee experience has on an organization, technology is critical and underlying to every component of that impact. So if we go back maybe 10 years, the idea of bring your own device started to become prevalent throughout the workplace. But really what we look at when we consider what bring your own device meant was really about the concept of bring your own experience. And as we moved through the last decade, and as I said, we started to experience the impacts of the pandemic, employees working through distributed environments, we really found that the idea of the digital workplace took a massive shift from what it was before. And truly, experience is everything in the digital workplace. That saying of experience matters is not just about someone's year's experience in a particular area, but really the experience they have in interacting with their technology that they use to consume and enable their workplace and their job, their colleagues, the customers, Everything has an experience. And when we talk about moving from a technology centric workplace to an employee centric workplace or human centric, we're not abandoning the technology by any means. Instead, we're looking at how can technology be properly leveraged, planned for, implemented, and supported to ensure that employees are receiving and enabling and experiencing a model in which they interact with technology to enable business outcomes. This is something that we very readily see that if they have the proper experience, it keeps employees happy and engaged. It helps acquire and retain new talent. And we find that as we look at large scale all the way through small organizations, productivity is directly affected by the experience that employees have in using the technology that they are enabled with. And we find that through multiple studies throughout every industry vertical that there is, Productivity is drastically impacted by the technology experience. So we see that eight to 11 hours of impact every single week can be negatively or positively affected by the experience that employees have leveraging technology to get their job done. We found that through a Stanford study, those employees who were not properly enabled when sent home during the pandemic lost up to 20% or a full day of their week trying to troubleshoot technology issues, have underperforming technology assets, and having the wrong tool sets enabled for them. So really, when we consider the impact, it clearly is massive to an organization. So we want to talk about how we bring that impact into a positive outcome. So when we take a look, as I said, over the last decade, we've had many shifts and transitions across the perspective of what a workplace experience entails and driving the employee satisfaction, their engagement and overall performance can really be looked at from a holistic perspective. And one of the things that we find is that many times the IT space in particular in leveraging technology and leveraging the support of those technology resources has been viewed as this idea of meeting, matching, exceeding, and measuring on the idea of an SLA, a service level agreement. But what we commonly find is this idea of a watermelon effect, where from the outside, it looks green. Everything looks like it's working properly. But then once you start to dig in, you actually find out that while the technology tracked metric may show that something is working well, the employee experience simply isn't matching. And what we commonly find is that the engagement of the employee starts to drop, their productivity starts to drop, and the employee satisfaction starts to drop when a system may have been put in place from a technology-centric mindset or planning perspective, but it may not have brought into consideration what the employee experience was going to be. So we really start to take a look at that holistic perspective expanding 
to take into consideration where employees are in their workflow, what's working for them and what's not, and how do we drive a much better satisfaction, which then leads to better productivity. So the dimensions of the employee experience really have to be explored. And here at CompuCom, we look at these four key facilitators of understanding what the experience is for an employee. So one of the first questions we ask is, is a technology enabled centric mindset in place? Are employees technology enabled? Do they have the right devices? Do they have devices and systems and services that work together properly? And is that underlying foundation of technology there? And when we take a look at the employee experience, it's not simply about the concept of end user compute or the device that they have in their hands or that they're using to interact with the technology landscape. Many times this is a view that is taken where it's just looked at from the employee perspective and the direct technology that they're interacting with. But the reality is that the entire infrastructure that is underlying any technology integration that they're using is key to this experience. In addition to the security footprint and framework in which employees are navigating multi-factor authentication, being able to sign in securely from any location that they need to, and all of the components that come in with today's modern world of multiple collaboration systems, cloud-based and SaaS-based platforms. So the idea of technology enabled is not simply one where it's the device, it's much more broad and encompassing than that. We then start to take a look at the idea of self-sufficiency. Are employees able to engage with the platforms and tools that they need to and able to support themselves when they run up against a challenge? Are they well supported when it goes beyond the ability for self-support? And do they have a flexible workplace? Are they able to consume technology anywhere they need it at any time and any interaction that they need, whether that be with another technology platform, a colleague, or a customer? So we start to see that this idea of employee experience is much broader than do I have a good experience with the device that's been issued to me by my employer? Instead, it's much more around the entire workflow and the entire concept of what I am enabled as an employee to do to be able to complete the job that I have in front of me. So for CompuCom, we really start to take a look at this from a customer-centric framework. And as we look at today's workforce, it's very evident that the idea before around that service level agreement, where things look green on a board and a dashboard to say that the system is up, more than likely doesn't have a all encompassing enough view to understand what is really taking place. As we talked about at the beginning, this idea that productivity could be affected by up to a full day per week by technology not enabling the experience that our employees need to have, we start to consider an idea of moving and migrating beyond this idea of a service level agreement to a concept such as an experience level agreement. And if you take a look at industry analysts, the entire concept around DEX or digital employee experience is gaining more and more traction because we find that the direct impact on an organization is so incredibly large based on the experience and the productivity that they are able to drive. So now we start to take a look at things like XLIs, experience level indicators, to determine how a employee is able to complete their job. And we start to leverage multiple data inputs. We use telemetry throughout an organization to figure out exactly where things are working and where they're not. We use sensor data, we use employee sentiment and CSAT scores to be able to have an understanding of that user's voice in the overall equation. And then we start to build a new model where instead of just looking at, is the system up? Now we start to understand, is the system truly enabling the business outcome that we're looking to drive? And so with that model of moving to an experience level score, we're really starting to look at the ways in which organizations can support their employees and managed service providers such as CompuCom can provide advisement, can provide support models, and can provide an end-to-end -end technology stack model where your employees are able to engage with the technology platforms that they need to truly move your business forward and change customer and internal outcomes. So if we consider this idea of experience, we've mentioned multiple concepts now. The reality is that we've asked employees to be more productive. We've asked them to work in a model where they were either sent into a work from home environment. Now they may be moving into a hybrid workflow. 
or we may have some combination of parts of our organization that are working in an office, in a manufacturing environment, in a retail branch location, or anything combined with other workers that are distributed around the world, whether they be working from home or any combination. And we start to see that the workflow is not only dependent on where the user is, but in addition, the systems that we are asking them to use, the model in which we are asking them to be productive, and the experience that they then have with these systems directly impacts and enables or detracts from the ability for them to create a efficient work product. So we start to take a look at, as I said, telemetry and sensor data to be able to determine over 10,000 different data points on how systems are working. So we can leverage technology now with AI and ML to discover where we have technology bottlenecks, where we're finding performance issues. And we start to take a look at all of the telemetry data to build a model in which we understand the technology footprint. But then we analyze that data and start to build a real-time model of what's working, not only in one organization, but at CompuCom, we can view all of our customer set to understand that there may be industry-specific or application-specific, there may be cloud-specific or connectivity-specific indicators of what's happening throughout a day-to-day -day environment. We then start to take a look at how that is used across a governance model to see where activity needs to be changed, where technology deployments need to be changed, where proactive troubleshooting may need to be put in place, and where we need to build actions and automations to enable that technology stack to be more efficient for a customer. We then take that idea and overlay how the experience is being brought into not only the picture of an employee interacting with their technology, but in addition to how they're able to go about their day-to-day -day workflow. Because what we find is that no matter what the technology story tells us, the end user experience may match or may be completely different. So finding a way to marry that idea of the technology driving an outcome that's possible, an employee being able to leverage that technology to complete their workflow and be more efficient than they were previously, even in today's ever-changing world, that's where you start to find true success. And that's where we start to find that the investments in technology, which previously really followed this idea of a lowest price, technically acceptable model. Now we find that if smart IT investment is placed with a consideration around what the ultimate experience will be, then we start to find that that investment very rapidly pays for itself. And we start to find that those productivity gains, those cost savings from employees being able to be not only more productive, but more engaged, that starts to lead to direct impact. And that idea of experience that we have goes far beyond just employee experience. Now we start to be able to influence our customer experience. We start to influence the overall engagement throughout all elements of an ecosystem that an organization is experiencing. So in conclusion, what we really wanna focus on in today's world is first of all, understanding that change is constant and change is difficult to navigate. We certainly saw a massive amount of change that the pandemic brought forth for all organizations of all sizes. Employees were expected to do more, sometimes with less. Technology started to catch up in many ways, and we started to have a distributed model in which we were leveraging technologies in new ways. But we need to ensure that as we worked as organizations through this transition to survive during COVID, and now coming out of the pandemic, we wanna move from a mindset of survive to thrive. So we really want to understand how do we create an effective digital workplace? How do we consider all the inputs of information that we have? How do we make sure that our users have a strong voice? And how do we ensure that we enable them to drive forth the business outcomes that we're looking for? So we wanna thank you for the time today, and we're going to wrap up the session on experience management as I said, I'm Josh Binky. I'm the Chief Solutions Officer for CompuCom. Very much appreciate the time today and I look forward to everyone continuing to have great sessions and a great conference. Thank you.